One of the easiest ways to see if a cavalry trooper is a true experienced campaigner is to watch and see how he rolls his bedroll. What goes in your bedroll and exactly what does one put in your bedroll to stay secure through hundreds of miles of trotting and galloping and hard campaigning, that's what we're gonna cover. How to roll your bedroll this week on the 11th OVC. It is interesting to know that very few of the cavalry tactics manuals specify to a trooper exactly how to roll his bedroll uh, and place it on the cantle of the saddle. In fact, Poinsettes only mentions uh, blankets in lieu of chabroquets and states the following. When blankets are used instead of chabroquets, they will be folded twice, the edges placed on the offside to have the effects well packed and three straps must be tightly buckled and must come up straight three inches from each other. The three buckles on the same line in the middle of the valise. The valise and wallet square so that both can be seen from behind. The valise should not incline to either side. So while you could argue on the applicability of those specific directions because it uses a little bit different equipment, the intent and guidance that Poinsettes offers is invaluable. Combine this with one of the only manuals that actually instructs troopers on how to fold a blanket, which is Cogden's Cavalry Compendium. So in Cogden's, starting on page 100, it states the following. The effects like pants, blouses, soldiers' books, uh, shirts, towels, brushes, socks, uh, etc., to be laid smoothly in the center of the blanket, the side edges of which should be turned toward each other, covering the effects so as to leave the blanket when rolled about 30 inches long. It should then be rolled, pressing with the knees as tightly as possible, confined in a pocket form similar to that of the overcoat. The roll should not be over 6 inches thick. If gutta percha or similar blankets are furnished, they should be rolled similarly, similarly to the blanket. If required, a supply of grain can be carried in them for one or two feedings. So these instructions bring up an important point to the assumption where many personal items uh, may, may be. Uh, many troopers carried personal items and haversack stuffers that we so commonly refer to them uh, today in the reenacting community. But as our friends over at the Civil War Digital Digest have demonstrated on their video entitled What's in Your Haversack, which is Volume 3, Episode 6, they make it very clear that basically only rations would be really able to fit in your haversack, plus or minus maybe a few small items. The vast majority of your personal effects would have to be placed in your blanket roll or bedroll and tied to the cantle of your saddle. This is why Cogning seems to list off odd things uh, like books and brushes and the like. So let's take a look at exactly how to roll your bedroll according to at least Cogden's Cavalry Compendium. As mentioned previously, the first step is to place all the small personal effects uh, very flatly and smoothly in the center of your blanket. Then fold the outside edges to the center with personally I do about a one inch overlap to keep the roll tight when you're finished. Uh, when done correctly, the roll should be about 30 inches long. Notice how this is the same dimension as when you roll your greatcoat. 30 inches long, no more than 5 or 6 inches in diameter. This dimension is really important as troopers today really tend to fold too much on the inside, shortening the length, which then makes your roll completely uh, bigger than you actually need. Then proceed to roll the blanket as tightly as possible, and then when, I, when we say tight, we mean very, very tight. Use your knees, use your wrists, and roll it as tight as possible. Because if you do have personal effects uh, in your blanket, whether it be a shirt or anything else, it is very difficult to keep under that six inch requirement. One trick that seems to help me uh, at least manage my stuff a little bit better and make it easier to roll, especially when I'm in uh, a hurry, is I actually fold my blanket up again lengthwise about two thirds of the way and then I start rolling as tight as possible. This seems to make it easier for me, like I said, and, and keep the roll tight, uh, but also it seems to reduce my time rolling. Uh, it may be just a placebo effect, but it seems quicker to roll it that way. Uh, lastly, when you are about a foot from the end, you want to fold your blanket back to you about seven inches, similar to that of the gray coat, uh, and then roll that uh, bedroll into that pocket created by that seven inch fold up. So once done, it should be a nice tight roll, no larger than six inches in diameter, that you can then center on your cannel and lash it down, again, as tightly as possible. 
One thing to note that is when both the blanket and the overcoat is rolled, most manuals specify that at least, or at least hint at securing them to your uh, saddle as tightly as possible with those coat straps. This is why breaking and snapping off your coat straps are very common experience for the cavalry reenactor. Uh, basically, what you want to make sure is that having a loose bedroll or great coat will soon unravel and, and, and just get un, un, unruly when you're on campaign. And that's why you want to keep things as tightly as possible. Even myself, I found that even when I get them down as tightly as possible, once I'm down the trail only about 10 or 12 miles, uh, I can look down and easily see that I can tighten it up at least two or three holes uh, than when I started. So that gives you an idea that if, if you move and if you don't pack tightly, then during the trail, during a uh, campaign, uh, you'll easily come unraveled unless you do this properly. That is why, like I said at the beginning, uh, one of the easiest telltale signs of a campaigner or someone who's experienced in the saddle uh, camping and maneuvering and living out of their saddle is to watch someone roll their blanket and see how their blanket looks once they're down the trail 10 or 15 miles. So we hope that clears up the best way or even arguably the right way to roll your bedroll. Please subscribe to our channel or now apparently you need to click on the bell on the right hand side of the bottom screen on YouTube because uh, apparently the bell means more than subscribers to YouTube apparently. So please subscribe, click on the bell on the right hand side, like us on Facebook and we look forward to seeing you in the field. But until then, ride hard.